Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Ron is Ranch. I'm Dan Roberts, the publisher of The Vegas Voice, and I am here with the new president of The <laughs> Vegas Voice, and that's Rhonda Goodman. And Rhonda, thank you for co-hosting this uh, segment with us. You are very welcome. Uh, you know, we have been talking about guardianship for the last seven, eight years, right. and we have certain dates coming on, and we'll go into that. Let's start with the fact that you were the one that really found out about this guardianship scandal. Talk a little bit about what is guardianship. Let's go with the basics and then we'll go from there. Guardianship in a, a left-handed way is kind of like a senior person having a private or uh, at this point in time, private person that's supposed to just be taking care of you and your needs. Supposed to be. Supposed to key be. Keyword. Mm -hmm. And yet it was something that we, we never even heard of. There was a private guardianship industry mm -hmm. that was in the state of Nevada that really had the laws pegged so that really the family members would be limited in what they can and what they can't do. Right. And the thing that got me started with it in the very beginning, and I don't remember how I found this out, but I found out that... If you have a guardian, doesn't matter whether it's family or hired, they had to be in about a resident. That's correct. And I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard because Las Vegas and Nevada is the, t is the type of place that people migrate to from all over the country and leave their families behind. Mm -hmm. In other words, they'll come out seeking a warmer climate to get out of the snow, right. like you did. Mm -hmm. And so if... if the person had to be in about a resident, and let's say, like I, I've always said, if something happened to me and I wasn't aware of my wits and what's around me as I get older, my kids would take care of me, not to worry about it. Well, I'm lucky my kids both live here. But what if somebody's kids are in New York, Florida, wherever? California, yeah. California. Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean they can't be your guardian? Because in my mind, your guardian is family. Yep. It's the most logical thing. And I decided there's got to be a way that you can deal with the Nevada legislature and make it change the law so that a guardian, be it family or hired, can live anywhere. No reason not to. Uh, so I called Victoria Seaman. At, at that time, time, she was assembly. She was woman. running for assembly. She wasn't assembly woman yet. She was running for it. There was no doubt in my mind because of the way she campaigned that she would get it. So I had her and another candidate meet me for lunch, and the first question I asked them is, well, I asked Victoria because I knew her. Where does your daughter live? And she said, lives in California. Yes. Why? And I said, okay. Were you aware? that if something happened to you and you needed someone to take care of you, I'm assuming you would want Tatiana to do that. That's a daughter. Right. right. And she said, well, yeah, of course. I said, can't do it. She's not a Nevada resident. She said, what do you mean? I said, that's a law. Look it up. Yeah, and, and especially if you win, you've got to know that. Look it up. And, and I, that was just one of a number of laws that that, right. that, that was that the changed. one that got us started. Got us started. Right. But then there was something and under the private guardianship industry, which really nobody even knew that mm -hmm. there was an industry. In effect, let me summarize it, and then you tell me if I'm right or wrong, in which a private person who you have no dealings with, right. not a friend, not a relative, was able to grab you and take you and become their guardian. Right. And sometimes you didn't even know about it until after, after right. the fact. But the thing about it that I found most fascinating is the powers of the guardian. Go ahead, talk a little bit about that. What do they have over this person? Everything. Absolutely everything. And the easiest way to explain it is to say, if you are a ward, which is the term they use then, and you have a guardian, your guardian becomes you in every essence. In every essence, which means someone our age, mm -hmm. they can uh, change where your social security payments go to? They automatically, automatically. do. All, all of your mail goes to the guardian. If you had any pension, it goes, goes to, the, to guard. the guardian. They had everything. They have control of all the money because they're supposed to be taking care of you. That, that was the theory behind it. That was it. the theory. And, and after a couple of people went to jail based on Ronna's work, 
another law was passed in which you can now nominate who you want as a guardian if, God forbid, the case you is needed arise. One, right. And how did how did that come? I mean, who would ever think that you needed a form to be filed? But it, when you file the form, and when how does it work? In the way it works, and the way we found out about it was through several people and one particular couple that a private guardian by the name of April Parks literally went to the to their house, said she had been appointed by a judge as their guardian. You're coming with me and literally took them from yeah. the house. And the husband said, we, she doesn't need, my wife doesn't need a guardian. I am her guardian. I take care of her. She, the woman had leukemia, was, was wheelchair bound, it was, had gone quite far. And they literally took her from the house. Their daughter, Julie, was calling and calling and calling, not getting answer to the phone call. And she Went lived, over in, to, lived in Las Vegas, not far from where they are, but same area of town. Went over to the house, and there was a note on the parent's door that said, for any information, yep. call April Parks and a phone number. And Julie called her and said, what's going on? Where are my parents? What, what do you have to do with us? And she said, it's perfectly legal, Julie. I'll take care and, of it. And it was. And it was, and yep. it took Julie two years to get her parents removed from that. And, and that was one of the reasons why we pushed for a guardianship nomination, nomination form that has to be filed with the Nevada Secretary of State. Talk about that form. What does it entail? The form entitles any person, be them senior or not, to file a nomination form with the Secretary of State, which goes into a computer file. Which okay, they call so a when they box. refer to it as a lockbox, it's actually a computer file. They can name who they want to be their guardian. When they fill out that form and get it registered with the Secretary of State, um, what that form does is in, they can they get a, um, a registration card in the mail, like a little credit card goes Correct. in your wallet. With that identification number that's on that form, they can change that at any point in time. They can change their guardian, but only them. They have to have that ID number, and they're the only person that can change it. So if you named one of your sons, and for some reason along the way you decide, eh, I'm not going to have him. I'm going to have another one. Yeah. You've got four, so you've got a lot to choose from. You can call and you can change who it is that you named. But when, they, when this has been filed by somebody, um, nobody can take that away from them. And let's say an April Parks comes along again and she decides she's going to take you because you have lots of money and she can find a way to do like she's done with everybody else. Another April Parks, right. which is out there. The first thing that the court has to do is call the Secretary of State and find out if you have ever filed a nomination form. If you have, end of story, case is over. And you know, and the thing about it, which is really great, is that, by the way, who was the first person to file me. this form? That was you. That and was we're, me. We're gonna show you that picture. Yeah. But the thing about this is that if you are taken, or might be taken, if you file this form, that ends it. That I mean, ends it. That you, ends it. You are entitled to name your own guardian, and they, the court cannot change it unless there is an angle we found out very recently. Let's say one of your sons comes along and says, I don't want this brother to do it. I want to be able to do it. I want to be able to be the guardian. I would take better care. Okay. He then would sue the son that's right. got you. And you have to pay, you're, not you, because you can't pay anything anymore. Your guardian has to pay it. They can then Contested. take all the money for the lawyer fees comes out of your estate. Okay, but in actuality, out of the 5,000 or so that filed, we really haven't had any example of a, a private guardian. I haven't heard of anybody. Right, I haven't heard of anybody challenging it until the one lady that we just wrote about. And, and we're going to follow up on that. But the thing about this is that Ron is on a mission, <laughs> in effect, to get everybody to sign up for the guardianship right. nomination form. And because of it, through the Vegas Voice, we, we will be holding four seminars, presentation, right. on the guardianship form. You get to go tell right. us the date and times. We're doing these all across the Las Vegas Valley in January, starting with 
Carnegie Heights on the 11th, January 11th at 10 a.m. The next one will be at McDonald Ranch on January 16th at 2 p.m. Then Summerlin, Sun City Summerlin Investment Club is hosting us to do one on January 24th at 7 p.m. And the final one that's booked so far is at Sun City Anthem and that's January 26th at 10 a.m. No charge whatsoever. And it's more than just no charge, which is the part that really gets me because what we have done and what we will be providing at no charge mm -hmm. is at these presentations, we will help you fill it out. We'll answer any questions you might have. Right. And you might have if you have different people who want to be the backup guardian. Mm -hmm. You have two, two different children. So what we are doing is we have all the information. We're providing the guardianship nomination Correct. form for everybody. We are also supplying the two witnesses. Right. And courtesy of, of Eleanor. Right, Eleanor uh, Pryor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a free notary. So in effect, and wait, and once you complete it, who's mailing it to the Secretary of State? We are. Vegas Voice. This is a soup to nuts type of situation where we really are doing everything for you except sign your name. Right. And, and one of the things we're saying is all you really need is the information that you want to put on and an ID to, uh, to show them exactly who you right, are. Right, driver's license or what have you. We even have told people that if you don't have a pen, don't worry, we'll supply the <laughs> pens too. So it, this is really Rana's mission to get everybody signed up for this and come up with a reason why somebody won't do this. There is no reason. Correct. Right. And it's just something that, again, through the Vegas Force and through Rana Goodman, we have these events. Again, we have the dates and times. It's on the on your screen now. And it's every, everything is, like you said, free. Mm -hmm. So please come on down. If you have any questions, by all means, contact Rana. At the, uh, your email is Rana, the Vegas Voice at AOL.com. Correct. And uh, we'll answer any questions. And we're hoping to see everybody there because it's really for their own good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And just if anybody asks questions of someone who says they're going, they need to understand if they have a guardian outside of who they've named, that guardian has all rights to everything they have and have worked for all of their lives. They can even sell your home, raid your safe deposit box, raid your trust. I always thought trust would, tr uh, what's that word, sacrosanct. But they're not. They're not. They're not. All, they, all a guardian has to do is go to the court and say, I need more money to take care of them. I need to, tell, I need to sell their home. I need to raid the trust. I need more money in their account. And the most important thing is you don't even want to get the guardianship court. No. Any no, circumstance. No. So uh, this is Dan Roberts with Rhonda Goodman for Rhonda's Ranch saying, hopefully we'll see you at the presentations. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.